Hi, this is Dr. Mary Hansen, and this presentation is on interpreting SPSS output for an independent samples t-test. The same example that was used to illustrate data entry and running an, SPS, an independent samples t-test in SPSS will be utilized for this example as well. The questions are, do the data provide enough evidence to conclude that humor has a significant uh, impact on memory? We are asked to use an alpha two-tailed at the 0.05 level of significance and also we're asked to calculate Cohen's D and R squared as measures of effect size. When this test is run in SPSS there are two tables that are provided. The first table is of descriptive statistics for the two groups. The second table provides output from three different statistical tests. Those tests are illustrated in the accompanying Word file. When interpreting the results from a statistical test, it is always necessary to write the null and alternative hypothesis using statistical notation. In this case, the null hypothesis is that the mean of the humorous groups equal the mean of the non-humorous group versus the alternative that those two means are not equal. Note that the null and alternative hypotheses both use population parameters in the notation. Again, the first piece of output that is provided by SPSS contains the descriptive statistics for the two groups. Uh, note that we'll pay particular attention to the two sample means in this case, 4.25 for the humorous group and 3.0 for the non-humorous group. Those two sample means serve as the basis for the computation of the test statistic. The standard deviations of the two groups are also provided, as well as the standard error for the two groups. Moving down to the second table that is provided. Highlighted in blue on this page is the output that exists for Levine's test for equality of variances. Note that there is a test for equality of variances and then a t-test for equality of means that is found on the right half of the output. Even though we asked for independent samples t-test output, we were given this Levine's test for the equality of variance by default. The null and alternative hypotheses for the Levine's test are that the null hypothesis is variance 1 equals variance 2 versus the alternative variance 1 is not equal to variance 2. The test statistic is an f-test statistic equaling 1.013 and the p-value of this test is 0.322. Comparing that p-value to 0.05, we find that we do not have evidence it, that would be needed to reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, we do not reject. We don't have any evidence that the variances of the two groups are different from each other. In that case, we can use the t-test output for the pooled t-test, which is the equal variances assumed row of the output. The second row of the table provides t-test results for when we cannot make the assumption that the equal variances exist in the two groups. So the two rows of SPSS provide two different statistical t-test output. The first row is the pooled t-test output. The second row is often called the Welch t-prime output and that is the output for when we cannot make the assumption that the equal variances exist in the two groups. In this particular example, because the sample sizes are equal, that's our first piece of evidence that we can use the pooled t-test results. Whenever the sample sizes are equal, the pooled t-test is the better test. Additionally, we have the results from Levine's test for the equality of variances, indicating to us that the variances are not different from each other. This test shows no evidence that the variances are different. Therefore, we can pool the variances using the pooled t-test. As we look at the pooled t-test output, we see that we are given the test statistic, t of 2.479, the degrees of freedom, which are 30, and then the p-value of the test, which is 0 0.019. 
We're also provided with the mean difference and the standard error of the difference, as well as a 95% confidence interval on the difference. When we rate up the results, using the pooled t-test, we see that our test statistic is a t with 30 degrees of freedom, giving us the test statistic value of 2.479. Since the p-value of the test is 0 0.019, less than 0 0.05, which is our alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. We do have evidence that humor has a significant effect on memory at the alpha equals 0 0.05 level. Unfortunately, SPSS output does not give us measures of effect size. Cohen's D is found by taking the mean difference divided by the pooled standard deviation. The pooled standard deviation is also not provided by SPSS. However, this website does provide a, a place where we can compute the effect size Cohen's D. As the website opens, you will notice that in order to compute Cohen's D effect size, we will need to enter the mean and standard deviation of group 1 and the mean and standard deviation of group 2. Going back to the SPSS output, I note that the mean of group 1 is 4.25 and the standard deviation is 1.52753. So I'm going to enter 4.25 for the mean of the first group and then the standard deviation of the first group. Uh, going back to SPSS, I see the mean of the second group is 3 and the standard deviation is 1.31656. So I enter the second group mean of 3 and the standard deviation. And then it's so simple as to hit the calculate button. And we are given the effect size D. Estimate is 0.876634. So the Cohen's D effect size is just about 0.88. Uh, you would also find that value if you used the pooled standard deviation computation, which is found in our textbook. I do suggest that you use this online link because it's a little bit shorter. Computing the effect size R squared, which is our test statistic squared um, divided by T squared plus DF, we get a value of 0.17 indicating that 17% of the variance in the number of sentences remembered is accounted for by humor. Uh, the effect size Cohen D implies a fairly large effect and we have 17% of the variance being explained. Again to review the output that is provided by SPSS we first get the table of descriptive statistics and then moving down to the t-test output. Uh, we have the pooled t-test results which are in the first row of the table. We have the Welch t-test results that we use if we have evidence that our variances are not the same. Evidence that the variances are not the same comes from this f-test which is a third test that accompanies the SPSS output for the independent samples t-test. The F-test result is provided by default and it is a test of whether the variances are equal. Again, this test can help us determine which t-test we should use. In this example, we use the pooled t-test. We have the test statistic, the degrees of freedom, and the p-value of the test. The p-value of the test is compared to alpha. If the p-value is smaller than alpha, we do reject the null hypothesis as we did in this problem. Uh, this presentation is by Dr. Mary Hansen.